Hi, my friend. I want to take you to a deep dark forest that Mama Dior took to on Yonkers of Duda there. And this game in modern days, you don't expect such games because game doesn't have um, any deep opening preparation, or I believe so. But it has a very nice middle game and end game structure. Let's uh, dive into it and somehow I skipped opening because the game is not much about opening it's a little bit but not much it's a queen gambit decline and mamadior of mm, temporarily sacrifice a pawn and exchange queen and usually you don't do that in early in the opening unless you want to get a row but this game is not for going for the row and okay this um, pawn should be captured back and this is the way that mamadior of does this removing the defender of the pawn and defender of the e pawn and finally getting back the pawn duda doesn't like the knight of mamadior kicks it away and then pushes h5 because wants to play bishop h6 and with check develop the bishop mamadior says okay do that i will develop my bishop as well duda says okay let test you I want to pin your bishop. Can you see it? But of course, Mamadiorov doesn't blunder, right? And we are getting closer to deep dark forest that I talked to you about the start. And Duda uh, attacks the bishop. And in the deep, deep dark forest, we will discuss more about the moves. And then Mamadiorov brings the rook in. And Duda defends the e uh, pawn. Notice that the e pawn was um, undangered. Duda couldn't move the knight because once moving the knight away, was able Mamadiorov was able to capture the e pawn. No, it is not a problem. Mamadiorov says that I don't like your rook in this file. Duda says I like it in this file. I will say here. And Mamadiorov pushes h4. The reason is that at some point Duda was going to play h4 himself and kicking the knight of Mamadiorov, and he didn't want to move that knight that easily and you will see that he doesn't move the knight that easily at all so Duda says that I want to grab that pawn Mamadiorov says that no problem I will defend it laterally and Duda finally moved the rook away and Mamadiorov attacked the pawn but Duda says no problem no my knight is not on e5 so I can push the pawn and pawn has a very good defender but Mamadiorov plays interesting move of rook d8. This is a sort of getting into the forest. Rook d8, as you can see, the engine evaluation changed from plus 4 white to minus 4 black. And it's about 1 point evaluation change because this 1 point is that winning this pawn. Winning this pawn and then uh, there was a nice continuation here. Mamadiorov played uh, rook e8, but there was a nice continuation here like playing rook there. And what can you do? Can you capture this pawn? Not really, because uh, first pawn the earth takes back the pawn, and it's not just taking back the pawn, also attacking the rook. Rook has nowhere to go, cannot go to uh, g8 because will be captured by bishop, right? Cannot uh, do anything, so has to be ca um, to capture the rook. You capture the rook, but um, the earth has an intermezzo pawn move, and what do you do with king? attacking the rook then you will lose a piece soon but uh, anywhere if you go anywhere else also you don't get uh, much uh, out of it going here again similar situation you uh, know check and then once the king moves another check and then uh, them winning the rook so this was a continuation that Mamadiorov maybe didn't see it and didn't play it but Instead, play now rook e8, and as you can see, engine evaluation is minus 1.8. And it says black is winning, but not completely is winning. Black defends the pawn, and Mamadiorov gives a check. But no, black goes up. Uh, notice that here is, of course, bad because it is under discovery check of the rook, and here it is also bad because of uh, knight comes in. So the only insane move for black was exactly king g5. And here Mamadiorov didn't play the best move. Here is our forest. And also engine's best move is insane. But 
Dud at this position had one good move and that good move was playing bishop g7. It's completely completely counterintuitive. And the user can see it's minus three, almost minus three according to engine. But Duda didn't find that move and said play attack the knight. And my dear says that I love my knight, so I don't move it. I love it to leave it to uh, in uh, silent and doesn't move the knight and just defend the knight laterally. <laughs> and what do you do? Do you capture the knight? Mm, what do you do? Uh, capturing the Ryan knight is very dangerous because if you capture the knight, then this check and then is this winning? No, this is winning for black actually. But instead, instead of grabbing that knight with either roof, if you grab the knight, it's made for black. You can give the next check if king goes back. No, you can get in and this is a killer position for white. For black, because we arrived to a position that we finally arrived in the game, except that here black has uh, two less pawns. So let's go to let's go to the what happened in the game in the game do the didn't take the knight understood that this is dangerous what do you do do you push the pawn to fork the rook and knight and getting mated of course not so do the play pawn e4 and as you can see in general evaluation changed for one point it still says black is winning and then my says that okay okay i move the knight but i give it for a pawn and to the take has to accept it and then takes the next pawn no is very dangerous setup for black couldn't tolerate that bishop there on c2 because the next move is a discovery check and of course you cannot go king there why because first we take and then give a discovery check so to the did voice move grab the bishop and now we are in a position that white is up an exchange but on a piece but also up a pawn. Do the develop bishop in a bad place and as you can see it's very difficult to decide where to put it on g7 or somewhere else but honestly I feel c5 is very bad because you may run into rook e5 at some point. And you don't want that but of course i understand young chris of Tudor because he wants to attack the f1 and make some counterplay doesn't want to wait and see but this allowed mamadiorov to simply play g4 on g4 and here again duda had to do the move the king but here again duda had to capture this pawn but he didn't capture the pawn it's also not horrible what he did but um, his idea is to have a h pass pawn and win the game but this h pass pawn doesn't work. We will see how beautiful Mamadiorov stops that pawn. Then pawn push giving up a pawn because we can win a bishop. Why not? So note the situation is that number of pieces is equal but black is up a pass pawn. But black is down exchange. Now can black convert that pawn to a queen or can white convert that exchange advantage to a win? Let's see. Duda attacks the uh, rook and rook goes away. Okay, the plan of Duda is clear. He wants to push the pawn, but oops, that's not a good idea. Why it's not a good idea? We will see in the game. Um, what was the good move? The good move was for something like, for example, king uh, knight defends the pawn and then slowly but surely pushing the pawn. And what is the goal of knight g2? Knight g2... Uh, and let me uh, show you some moves also there are uh, some bad moves here knight g2 the idea is that at some point white's rook can come to c2 and stop the pawn laterally and the other rook may go behind the pawn okay and knight g2 prevents attack to pawn at h2 if pawn is at h2 but it is very deep and uh, duda didn't see it let's show you some moves in this direction and for example, if you play careless in this uh, regard, then this check is clear, then uh, what can attack later, uh, attack from behind the pawn. And if you, you play careless and push the pawn, then you are basically almost mated. You should give up a knight to defend the mate. This was a mate, right? 
should defend not give up a knight to defend the mate and soon you will lose uh, even even if at some point um, white sacrifice the rook for a pawn there are two very strong pawns for in in the uh, queen side that white can use them and promote at least one of them so let's go to the game in the game what um, was played played h3 and Mamad Yorf gave a check and Duda just went up and doubled the rook and um, Duda said that I want to save the knight uh, and Mamad Yorf says that I want to go behind the pawn and win the pawn Duda said okay I push it and this was bad and this was bad because it's easy to attack the pawn and, and try to defend the pawn but uh, defend wasn't oh I want to give you Okay, this was a critical moment, sorry. Uh, what's the best move for white? What's the best move for white at this moment? I, I, if I, it was me, I was playing rook c3. But rook c3 is bad because uh, king goes close to pawn and defend the pawn and next move pawn is a queen. What can you do? You can just give it mm, a perpetual check. But instead, Mamadirov played clever move of king b3 and do the resigned. Why resign? Because what can you do? How to can you can save the pawn? You cannot save the pawn. For example, going g2 doesn't help you because next check wins the pawn. And what happens? What is bad about this position is that not just you are down a pawn, you are down an exchange, but one pass pawn will be created. You will be down another pawn, and your king is very far. And knight is not a good piece to stop far past pawns. So. Duda resigned and we have this beautiful game recorded in this story. Bye.